All right, uh, Jose well, Bouquet. You, you, you know can what? Eat Speak up a couple of the devil. Speak oh, of the devil. You, you say his name. He comes to save the day and, and to save you from oh, yeah. conversation with me. All right. <laughs> okay. Connor Mack, how you hey. doing? What's yep. up, man? How are you? Everything good? Everything's great. How about you? Every, couldn't be couldn't be better. I like couldn't to hear be that. Better. Be, <laughs> okay. Great news. All right. Shout out to Kelly McGinnis. Shout out to everyone. All right. Let's um let's get into it. We'll start with uh, with NBA. Okay. A few interesting spots on the card today. This is one of them. Lakers Atlanta. Atlanta, a decent sized favorite here, about five and a half or so. Obviously, a high total. Atlanta has been bad ATS all year long. Five straight ATS losses now going over, of course. We know what they do. Lakers on a back-to-back -back blowout loss at Houston yesterday. They had been covering before, and the Lakers have also been going over. Uh, I know that LeBron James, I'm assuming he's going to be out because he played Monday. He's kind of banged up. He rarely plays on the second of a back-to-back -back when he's banged up. Anthony Davis a little bit banged up as well. And I'm thinking that, uh, I don't know, you know, even though I don't know if I'd really want to take Atlanta minus all these points, which is such a bad ATS team, but I'm thinking the no-brainer play here might just be over, first half over, Atlanta team total over, something like that. What do you think about this one, Connor Mack? Let's real quick, we'll hit the the total and it's mm -hmm. moved, Pete. The, the over, mm -hmm. you just got to it. That's what I'd be on. This is moved up, you know, if you don't yeah. mind. What's it at right now? It's moved up, what, three forty-eight points? Yeah, I mean, we're starting to get up there from last night. A yep. few of these uh, yeah. have moved briskly. But we'll get to it, the injuries. It looks like uh, Murray and Hunter maybe a go. You know, they're at shoot-around here for the Hawks. I think LeBron is a, a go. And oh, is Davis is a, okay. is a maybe with the Achilles from everything I've heard. Uh, that's questionable. So those are weights. So, yeah, Lakers off the beat down last night. One thing with Atlanta – I don't want to lay any points with MP, especially at home. This year, they just haven't been able to get it done. I mean, just their straight-up records, 9-13 and 13 at home. Um, even with the Lakers on the back-to-back, -back, uh, I kind of want the points, knowing LeBron could be in. Mm -hmm. uh, so I leaned Lakers, and obviously over, we've just uh, gone a little bit too high here, 248, 249. Yeah, it's up to 248. The line is down a little bit to, uh, to five. Let's glance at the comments section. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, comments coming in. Comment. Uh, shout out to Troy Torrance. Shout out to Troy Torrance. Thank God seeing you in there. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Shout out to Troy oh, Torrance. Yeah. Shout out to Rez Mob. Kelly McGinnis has got to take the Lakers plus five and a half. They need to win these winnable games. They play some heavy hitters in the next few games. Yeah. I mean, any fade ATS of Atlanta is obviously defensible. Wu Rizza says live bet the Hawks third, third, fourth quarter or second half. Andrew G, Lakers plus five in the over. Sweaty Butcher, yeah, quoting the, the, the Hawks ATS record as a favorite. It's terrible. <laughs> Not flesh out. <laughs> this is where Pete gets nervous that he may have to talk to Jose for two minutes. Yeah, it's awkward. It's like uh, the freaking feels like a freaking uh, Chevy Chase talk show, which he had for like two shows and then it got canceled because it was. Yeah, so how awkward. long was that? Remember? What'd you say? How long did he have that? About a couple episodes. Like, I, I think I think they shut it down right after the Goldie Hawn interview. But we're we're losing everyone under the age of forty five right now. So let's uh, <laughs> let's not talk about that. Okay. I just wanted to make that comment because Nutflush Allen. I don't even know how old Nutflush Allen is, but he might remember that. All right. In the meantime, I'm just wasting time because I'm trying to decide if I was going to take the over no brainer ish and be, have it be one of those like if it loses it's okay. It's a no brainer play that I can't not take. Yeah, Lucas Hart says, can you imagine riding an elevator in silence with Jose for 18 floors? Yeah, I mean, you know, it would be <laughs> awkward. You know, you, at that point, you'd be thinking, man, life is actually really long. Jeez, when will sweet death come to me? And then the 18th floor comes. You know, oh, thank God. All right. I don't know. I'm wasting time here because I should. What is this? Is, is, is this going to soar over or even just like creep over? And then we're like, why didn't we take a shot? It doesn't have to be a lock. It just has to be a 54, 55% proposition, right? Yep. You're right, Pete. I mean, that's where I, I'd still be on even 248 and a half. It's over or nothing. I guess they're waiting on this because I'm a little bit surprised. Five and a half. I mean, it's only moved a point. But I really like some people put in the chat, uh, you know, Hawks won a few games, they, they've lost back on that kind of track. I just, I don't trust him at all. I don't know why you'd want to lay any points with him, even with the Lakers on the back-to-back. -back. 
Wu Rizzo says, can't back Lakers in this spot. Robert Franklin says, Lakers money lines. So, I don't know, man. I was thinking maybe the over, but uh, I'll hold off. And Wu Rizzo says, over or no play. Dana Delp says, uh, I know this sounds crazy, but I like the Hoosiers plus two. The big guy is back. Yeah, I was thinking about that as well. Thinking about that game, just not sure exactly what to make of the Hoosiers. They think of the, they seem like a team that's just not in a good mental mind frame right now, but it might be this game and stuff going on behind the scenes that, that we don't know about. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll get to that in a bit. All right, I guess I'll hold off officially for now. Let's move on. Pacers and, and the Celtics, right? Indiana off three nice home wins, covered two of them. Celtics on a back-to-back. They pounded the Pels last night, but they didn't. Well, they, pounded, they, they beat them, but they didn't cover. They've been an under-trending team. And Tyrese uh, Halliburton back in the lineup earlier in the show. I forgot who it was. Someone gave uh, uh, Halliburton uh, under assists prop a, a, as a play that he liked. But having Halliburton back, I assume, has to help Indiana significantly, right? Uh, you know, hamstring issues can sometimes linger. But uh, my sense is that probably Pacers and first half are the play. Lean under, not sure about that. But I want to hear what you have to say and whatever in the comment section has to say, because I'm leaning Pacers first half. This one's tough for me now that he's coming back. I mean, how many minutes are we going to get from you? You mentioned the hammy. You know, it's just it's a very sensitive thing. How many minutes is he really going to get? Like we did last week when he'd be out, Pete, you take it under, even though they had a few overs there with him out when Siakam came in last week. Uh, the Pacers unders would be good. Celtics unders have also been good. But when these teams get together, there's just a shit ton of points. I think mm-hmm. we've even covered this matchup a couple of times already, the last, you know, a few weeks ago, a month ago, uh, doing this. You know what? Even on the back-to-back, maybe full game with the Pacers, how, how, why would you want to fade the Celtics even on a back-to-back? They're the best first half team in all of basketball. You know, Troy put right. in there. Maybe they're due for regression. That's true. They've been money, money at home, money in the first half, 34 and 12. Um, I don't know how much Halliburton plays. That's why it's a little question mark for me. But I'd need to go the other way. I'd be on the first half. Celtics is mm-hmm. nice for. Nutflush Allen giving us a little tidbit from his brain here. Shout out to Nutflush Allen. He has to bounce, but he's been cashing a tab team total over since December 1st. Shout out to you, Nutflush Allen. Troy Torrance says, will Boston get nice. in, in in the paint? Wu Rizza's talking about how they haven't really played together. Pascal and, and, and Halliburton. Wu Rizza likes Celtics first half. Robert Franklin likes Pacers plus seven full game. Troy Torrance saying Celtics due for ATS regression. Dan Kelly saying Celtics had to expend a lot of energy coming back to win after being down big. AOD mm-hmm. says pump sports forever. That's the most important thing. Hmm. Hmm. And, why, what, and what about that? I was leaning under, but it's a high total. Now it's up to 245. What's up with that? I think it's just him being basically called being in to expect more points. Yeah. Is that what that's what I think? Why why it's moved? Yeah. I literally yeah. just think it's Halliburton. Basically, he's a go. And that's why we this total's moved up. Especially this much. Five Celtics points. are pretty, yeah. Oh, they're great. Like yeah. I was just talking about. They. So good and efficient on offense, Pete. And yeah. uh, a lot of games this year, it's been like 119 to 105 or something like that. And the game stays right. under because they're they're good defensively. All right. I have to decide what I want to do here. Lions moving in Boston's favor, but I will I will take a shot officially with the Pacers now after we've been yapping about it for like 10 minutes or whatever. I can get seven and a half. So I'm going to take the um, the pinnacle line here. Pacers plus seven and a half, minus 108, current line of pinnacle, plus seven and a half, minus 108, current line of pinnacle. Definitely leaning under, definitely leaning Celtics, team total under, like you said. It just might be, but Dan Kelly talking about how they uh, ex- exerted a lot of energy. Wow, 125 and a half or 126 the Celtics team total. All right, team total. maybe we'll come back to huge. it. I'm sorry? Yeah, that's a huge team total because I was going to think yeah. of taking a look at that, and they haven't got that consistently uh, even against the Pacers. Some of these games they have where they scored 140, but there's been plenty of you know 125s, 122s that would not get there, Pete. <laughs> mm, Robert Franklin. Saying Celtics going to dogfight, think it shows second half, Pacers plus seven. And um, Sharon Pulliam likes the first half under. Yeah, I was thinking about unders one way or another as well. Uh, and Brent Cook says, I got Celtics scoring 111 in this game. I might triple or quadruple up on this one. I think our read is right, and, and, and we're not – and I don't want to overthink it. But for now, 
I might add some at the end of the show, but I will uh, just st- start with the Pacers plus seven and a half, minus 108 as an official uh, play. And now let's move on. Here we go, the Utah Knicks game. Yeah, Kelly was talking about this. Both teams on a back-to-back. Obviously, Utah got blown the f out by the Nets last night, but uh, but they have been great ATS for a long time. They're getting about four points here. Totals two thirty and a half. The Knicks, of course, big change of pace, getting a lot of covers, going over. I'm sorry, going under, playing good defensively. They were at Charlotte last night, rolled them. The game was low scoring, and I was thinking, I don't know if I'd want to necessarily take Utah first half. Well, that's why I was leaning. More so leaning under and first half under, but my thoughts are Utah first half under and first half under. Don't really want to fade the Knicks right now in any situation. Uh, Randall is out, though, right? Some injuries now for, for for the Knicks, so maybe it's the system that has them playing so well right now, but they definitely have some injuries. Leans are Utah first half and leaning under and first half under. Interesting situation here. What would you take on this one, Connor Mack? Yeah, it is. What do we get? You know, both teams – don't have to go anywhere, but both teams on back to back. As the Knicks, I mentioned, got blown out uh, by the Nets. Nets needed a big win, and the Knicks just uh, keep on rolling, <laughs> keep on yeah, winning. This maybe this is the important game with the back to back, even against the Jazz. You know, when is it going to? With Randall being out and the shoulder, like is is this the game? And is this was this enough points? Was this you thought it was enough for the Jazz, Pete? I don't mind it at four and a half. I just Knicks have been rolling as of late. I yeah. think they could get the job done here. I mean, I I love the Jazz. I love them at home. And they've even been better on the road, starting to come cover numbers uh, this year. If the shots drop, because uh, they shoot threes and they're not bad, 35% on the year, they could be right in this one. But I think you just can continue to ride the Knicks here uh, at home. You know, I lay it. It's just that. That, that 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 Utah got like really embarrassed last they night. They did you get embarrassed last night. Against a shitty oh, ass yeah. team, you know? <laughs> Against a shitty fucking yeah. team. You know what I'm saying? This is true. Feel me? And Nick's rolling. What have they won seven in a row? Seven or eight in a row. I liked how their defense has looked, Pete, and you talked about the under a little bit. Yeah. But, uh these teams not even getting to hundred. I don't you know, they've had finally some good wins. I was talking about earlier. Were all these wins great? You know, they beat the Wizards. The Raptors, the Heat are playing like shit. The Hornets, but they do have a couple good wins in there. So, fascinating mm. game. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out. To, oh wait a minute, sorry, I was looking at something else. Okay, so I'm taking Utah first quarter. It's just like last week. I don't know if you remember Connor Mack, but I was like, mm-hmm. I'm gonna shock the world by taking Portland first quarter. You know, they what covered happened? the first half. They covered the full game. Lost the first quarter. Unbelievable. Oh, I mean, it was not they did. Myself by being too cute. Once again. What? I thought you covered that. Well, they lose by seven then or something the first quarter. Yeah, no, they, they covered, covered first half. They covered everything uh. except my official play. Right? Yeah. Yeah, they did. You thought they covered that? Most of it, you're right. There was one play they didn't cover. First quarter spread. <laughs> okay. That was the play that I gave. But I think I'm going to uh, do it again here. I'm I'm going to give um I'm going to give the first quarter uh at Jazz Whoa. first quarter as in, so Pete. go ahead. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No. Just I want to put out Razor. This is where we wait for Vegas. This is why I wait on the NBA a little bit. Some plays mm-hmm. I put out here right away, but I just with all the injuries, all the stuff, and NBA, I do like to see a little bit more of the money than some of these other sports that I do, like college basketball. Uh, it's just a waiting game a little bit with the NBA. Literally almost to tip sometimes. Not every bet, but I'd say a lot of it. So, all right, yeah. get yeah, back to sure. it. Get on your jazz. All right, I'm going to I'm gonna take it. I'm going to make an official play. I'll just use the pinnacle line right now. Utah first quarter, plus one and a half, minus 111. Utah first quarter, plus one and a half, minus 111. Again, if they cover the full, the first half, third quarter, fourth quarter, full game, and lose the first quarter, you know, what else is new? Just another week. Real quick, Dan yeah, just put ahead. in there with Randall out. Yeah, Josh Hart, big minutes. Should have big minutes mm-hmm. again. Oh, probably around over 35 or around there. So that, that's a good look. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, comments coming in. Uh, Brent Cook says, Jazz on fade right now. That Nets loss was sick. Knicks are nothing. Right. But does that mean they come in here and they're just like, fuck it, let's get out of New York? Or are they like, for, for, for one quarter, let's just prove that we're a real NBA team? What are you Justin McElby yeah. says, line low for a reason. Jazz plus four and a half. 
North Ender likes Jazz plus four and a half. Jay Smooth says under game for sure. Robert Franklin says Knicks minus four. Utah gets blowed out on the road. Kelly McGinnis, Jazz stink on the road. Knicks by more than 10. And Sharon Pulliam likes full game under. Yeah, I mean, the total was a little bit – was weirdly high to me, and it, um, it's gone down to 229 now. So uh, we're going to move on. But why, why, why was this total so high to start? It, I did, it didn't quite make sense to me. Yeah, I think it was a little bit too high to jump as well. And they, they obviously they, boom, hit this and brought this down four or five points. Yeah. If we still had that, I think that would be a play. Pete. If you got 233 here, be on this yeah, under. Or, you know, Jazz can get into more of an over team, uh, yeah. especially on the road, don't play defense. But the Knicks do, uh, and the unders have been cashing. So that's what everyone saw. Yeah. And everyone pounced on this total. And Utah, and Utah gave up 147 last night. I'm going to take the full game <laughs> under as an official play. I'll take the line okay. even after the move. I'll take the pinnacle line, 229 minus 106. You know, I'd rather have 233 or whatever, or 230 and a half. But I'll make that an official play under 229 minus 106. I'll make that um, official. And let's glance at the comments section. Oh, Dana Delp likes Knicks trifecta. First quarter, first quarter, first half, and full game. And Matty Ice, take play of the day, Akron minus 10 and a half. Yeah, that is an interesting one. We will talk about that one. Akron coming off of a, of a loss, I believe. Let's copy and paste mm-hmm. that. Oh, no, Dan Kelly says two tired teams don't play defense, Pete. Yeah, I know. I know that the tired legs oftentimes means no defense. All right. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, knowing <laughs> right, Dan Kelly, <laughs> trying to. <laughs> Make me not add a loss, but I don't know. I'm going to go with uh, with what I thought. All right, next game, let's talk. Toronto, the Raps and the Bulls, right? Toronto lost straight up but covered at Atlanta in their last game, covering at Atlanta, no great feat. Uh, lost seven, six or seven before that, ATS. So Toronto clearly uh, overvalued by the market recently. The Bulls back at home. Most of their games recently have been on the road, mostly covering, playing pretty well. And uh, I was thinking about um, a shot again, you know, maybe with Toronto first quarter or first half. Uh, you know, the, the the Bulls have been playing well. Feels like a little bit of a down spot for them. And uh, Toronto does feel kind of scrappy. Uh, just just looking at, at what they've done. The last game was close, even though it was against Toronto against Atlanta. I was thinking about Toronto first half. I don't know, man. What do you think, Connor Mack? And also leaning over. When these teams play, they're usually pretty close, mm-hmm. Pete. But I think this line is is right, and it's going in the right direction with the Bulls. And they just kind of set this here perfect. Like, you want to bet the Bulls at home? You got to yeah. lay base two possessions over that. Six, they got to win by seven here for you to cash. I don't want the Raptors. It's just, I just don't want this mm-hmm. team at all until they start doing anything. And I don't know if they will. I mean, I think you just go kind of into somewhat take mode, but they're in that weird spot where they've already won kind of, you know, they're 16 and 30 on the year. No Barrett out, no way. I mean, how much can Gary Trent Jr., Schroeder, Scotty Barnes do in this game? I don't know. And maybe they can hang around, but I just don't want them at all. I think you lay it here with the Bulls or stay away. Yeah. See, I was thinking that uh, that it's just a little bit of a, a little bit of a down spot with uh, with um, with the Bulls and uh, uh, you know and, and, and don't they play too? Some do they have a game just tomorrow? I was looking at there. Yeah, they just they play at Charlotte, I think. Yeah, the Bulls do tomorrow. Right. So nothing big. Okay. You know, yeah, I, I mean, you know, the the Raps have a lot of starters out, but that guy, uh, just Jordan Wara, is playing pretty well. You know, the, uh, the, the, the replacements coming in and maybe, uh, you know, getting a chance here. I know the Raps are, are, just, are just not good on the road. Oh, man, I don't know. You, you think that's really stupid to take the Raps first half here, huh? I, I wouldn't play it. I think I'm going to do it anyway just awful. because. Uh, I like what, it, what I like your I like what you're doing. <laughs> Let's like see it. what. The, oh, who RZA says Raps early, I'd lean. Dan Kelly says Raps players know that management has given up on the season. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Robert Franklin, lean bulls minus six. No way I put my money on crafters. Think they've mailed it in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Dan Kelly saying I'm not chasing you off a play. You just asked why the line was moving. Yes, thank you very much, Dan Kelly. Troy Torrance, I would not be investing in this Raptors team. No way. 
Yeah. I'm not really investing. I'm more like coin flipping with this Raptors team. But, yeah, I hear you. All right. Thanks, <laughs> comment section. I'm sorry. You've talked me off of it. You've talked me off of it. And let's and let's move on. Uh, Philly and Golden State. Now, this one I thought I had. I don't know. This one, again, I want to hear what you guys all have to say. Golden State, a small favorite here. Totals mid-230s. Philly's uh, on a back-to-back up. Blown out of Portland last night as a, as a decent road favorite. Not, <clears throat> not doing well ATS. And Golden State, off of, you know, the OT loss to the Lakers, they had kind of been covering before that and going over. You know, with Draymond Green going coming back, I'm not sure if they're a good bet ATS necessarily, but they do seem to be picking it up offensively. And I was thinking over and first half over is the way to go here. Not sure. I guess I would be leaning Golden State anyway, uh, but I was thinking uh, I was thinking the over is once again a play here with Golden State and first half. What do you think, Connor Mack? Yeah, I mean, you got to think Sixers maybe play. I mean, they just got their ass blown out. That's yeah. going to happen, though, in the NBA, uh, you know, no Embiid, but to uh, a Blazers team, he's not very good. But they do play their best, best basketball at home. And maybe they were looking forward, uh, once they were starting to lose that game last night, to this one here. I, what do we get? I mean, Bead's still going to be out. That's a big question mark, you know. I think in this well, one, we might not, Max, yeah, I'm not sure how much he'll play. Go ahead. Yeah, he, he's got an ankle issue. Does he go? So it's tough range. And Golden State, you know what they are, Pete? They are what their record is. Like, I, you know, they're 19 and 23. I mean, I think they're at best a 500 team. If you get into the playoffs, you know, and maybe make a little noise. But, you know, finally getting older. There's this Golden State team. I don't want to lay any points with them. I think it's just a weight who's in here with the Sixers to maybe move on them. Yeah, I am going to take some overs, though. And if it, if it, if it, if it loses, um, that's okay. But uh, The overs at the last few games have been way over, yeah. too, Pete, those, yeah. those last couple for the Warriors. I can't not take it. All right, let's start out. I'll take the first half over. Philly, Golden State, first half over. I'm going to take 120 and a half. Minus 106. That's the current line at Heritage. 120 at minus 106. It's 110 at, uh, at Pinnacle, but I'll take the 106 at um, at Heritage. I want to take the full game over as well, and I think I also want to take the Golden State team total over. Uh, you know, I can see I'm not covering the game soaring over, but the team total is still going over. Is, is, is Philly going to be able to slow him down? I just feel like no matter what, Golden State is playing, um, you know, a much faster-paced offensive game right now, and they should go over. No. Yeah. I, yeah, I agree. Yeah. It seems like they should get in the one twenties. Mm-hmm. Right? Don't you think? So mm-hmm. I think that would get you over. Yes. Yes, it does seem that way. All right. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to take the. Um, I'm just going to take the first half team total over for Golden State. Maybe I'm getting a little bit cute. I usually regret it much more often than not when I uh, when I do that. But uh, but that's okay. I'm going to take I'm going to take the Golden State first half team total over. 61 minus 110, current line at um, at Heritage. 61 minus 110, I'll take that one as well. Golden State, first half, team total over, 61 minus 110, current line at Heritage. Let's look at the comments section, see what people have to say. Dan Kelly, I've got a future on Golden State to not make the playoffs. Very nice, very nice. Troy Torrance leans Warriors first quarter, first half. I, I would lean that way as well, and full game. Not a high line. Wu Rizzo says, wait till the Sixers players rolled in and get on Warriors money line. Yeah, it feels like a Warriors spot. I don't like him to cover big numbers with Draymond Green back, but just to get a win against a team that maybe is a little bit vulnerable, I definitely like them. So I was leaning that way as well. Shout out to shout out to Dabby Cab. What up, homies? I don't know if what he up? considers me a homie, but I assume he does. So I'll assume he's saying yeah. what up to me too. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, yeah, Brent Cook says the over looks good. And, and the Pacers, yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to take that under in, in the Boston game as well. Just because if it hits, I'll be annoyed with myself. It's up to 245, but I can see it coming crashing back down. I will add that one on there. I'll add uh, Indiana, Boston. I'll just take the full game under 245 minus 105. That's another official play there for me. And that uh, wraps it up as far as NBA is concerned. All right, let's review our official plays. I'll go first. I'm taking Pacers plus seven and a half minus 108 and the under in that game, 245 minus 105. 
Taking a shot with Utah, first quarter, plus one and a half, minus 111, and the under in that game, 229, minus 106. And in the Golden State Philly game, I'm taking the first half over, 120 and a half, minus 106, and the Golden State first half team total over, 61, minus 110. Connor Mack, what are your official plays so far in NBA? Yeah, you know, I'm going to move on just one, Pete. I, I, mm -hmm. I'm going to wait here on the Celtics if I want to play them first half. I'm going back to the game we talked about first. I think this is too many if we have LeBron mm -hmm. in. I've just been going over yeah. at five and a half. They've even covered in Atlanta. Atlanta can't cover the number at five and a half. I'll take the Lakers here. Uh, you know, after getting blown, I think they could hang around, you know, in this game. All right. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. And uh, yeah, we're just says low shack. Just wait. Yeah, I will. I just uh, you know for for the purpose of this show, gotta give whatever's available yeah, right show. now. As far yeah, as far as information. Oh, nasty Nate says Celtic smash. All right, that'll be just one loser if that happens. That's it for NBA. All right.